You seek medical treatment to make things better, but what happens when things go very bad? Well, on this trial Tuesday, attorney and larger-than-life litigator himself, David Ayler, offers us some good advice. Counselor, tell us all about this problem. Medical malpractice really at an issue in many of our lives today. Yeah, and you, you see it more often than not, and a lot of times it does go undetected. Um, essentially, what will happen is uh, people will continue to go to their same, um, you know, doctors, the same physicians, specialists, that sort of thing, and they can't determine exactly uh, maybe what is wrong with them or what should be taken care of uh, so that, you know, it can heal them. Um, and really what you need to do is you need to be real careful about where you're going and who you're going to and if you continue to go to them. Uh, getting a second opinion really in any field is not something that's going to be insulting. Thing. It's actually encouraged most often. And I think that'll be the first place that you can really kind of stop the process. What kind of constitutes medical malpractice? Because there's such a, a range, a gambit, if you will, in things. Everything from internal care to a surgery where, where a surgeon or a tech might leave something inside the body. I mean, it really can, can range uh, uh, pretty pretty wide. You're right. I mean, a lot of times you see um, things that go undetected or misdiagnoses and things like that. Uh, somebody has some sort of ailment and they continue to go back, get treated different ways, and it turns out to be something else uh, that was actually just missed at all. But then you also have things like, uh, you know, surgery, you know, where they left a sponge in there or, or um, you know, some sort of other surgical equipment. Um, so some things are easier to more detect than the others. But most important thing is if you've gone through that process and gotten second opinion, and you have other medical opinions that say, hey, you know, something wasn't done properly or something wasn't right, uh, that's the time you really should consult with an attorney. Yeah, tell us about the legal recourse that you have. How do you kind of start that rolling? Well, it, it's a very expensive and detailed process. It's, it's, no, it's a lot different than any other type of uh, civil litigation, you know, car accidents, personal injuries like that. Um, so really what you need to do before you set up in a time with an attorney is you need to make sure you get all your documentation together. Uh, if you go in there and just tell your story, there's only so much they're going to be able do. They themselves, as well as the experts they hire, have to review all the documents to determine if there really is a cause of action. What are some of the more popular medical malpractice claims that, that you see in your office? Um, you see things related to emergency room incidents where things were done quickly, sometimes that sort of thing. Again, misdiagnosis where maybe someone was given another type of medication for something that they thought it was and it ended up ultimately not being that. And then of course, as you mentioned earlier, surgical issues. Yeah, and how do you how do you make sure that you mentioned getting all that documentation? How do you make sure that you can do that? and get it all in one place. Well, the easiest thing to do is just, you know, keep a record of every time that you are having any visitate visits or any other surgeries or that sort of thing. But then you're you're the easiest person to go get that information. Obviously mm -hmm. an attorney, medical expert can get that information, but you know, that that's your documents before anyone else's. So, uh, you know, you, if you have an incident or you're concerned about something, you can always it might take a couple days, maybe you have to pay a copy and fee or whatnot, but you can always request your own documents quicker than anybody else. So, let's recap here, make sure that you have all your documentation, you get that second opinion, and you get in to see a lawyer. Absolutely. All right, Councilor David Ayler, thank you so much. Thanks Appreciate for your me. time, sir. And you can help homeless cats. We're back next with the Feline Freedom Coalition. ABC News 4 wants to see your pet's best Halloween costume. Log on to abcnews4.com slash Halloween Pet Contest to upload a picture of your pet in costume, and you could win a free pet portrait session from Low Country Focus Photography.